Could I have a word, please, Lord Van Zykes? Speak, Inspector. It's just that I really ought to be getting back to the station now to put in my report. There's really nothing more I can add to this testimony, so it's all the same to you. Permission denied. Oh. Well, F you then. The moment of the shooting again. Oh, we got the epic music. While these ruffians were jostling with the broker, I was still near the entrance to the shop. Oh, wait. Oh, this is the same one. I'm gonna read it anyway. When Windebank threw Nash over the counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shot himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the people in the door, though. I think it's that. The accused in a black coat shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. I saw the blood spatter all over that wretched girl. Then she tossed the gun out of the peephole, so I picked it up and made my escape. Okay, I'm just gonna go through them very carefully. Obviously, it has to do with the evidence, right? So it has to do with the peephole thing. It's gotta be this. I could see him through the peephole in the door. You with me, everybody? You with me, guys? We're gonna do it. So, I could see him through the peephole in the door, though? I don't think so. You know what, actually? I don't think I have to, but... I didn't examine this at all. Let's do that first. So I, so I just, I just built that up, and then I'm like, actually, on second thought, let's just see. Ooh, cool. Phew, these, those vicious teeth look like they can rip through almost anything. They're good, aren't they? They're made of a special alloy developed just for the job. The cutter rotates ten times per second, so we can get through any kind of door in no time at all. And what are the two parts at the top there? Uh, those are for attaching hinges to the section of the door that gets cut out. Right, of course. Nothing can match this machine for power. It can make mint meat of even the toughest of doors. Nice. It sounds so charming and friendly when you say what it's for, but <laughs> it's very dangerous. It feels like the reality of Cap Flappamat is that it's a grim weapon of door destruction. Braggahai is so adorable. There's nothing I wouldn't do for him, even developing deadly weapons. Haha. <laughs> okay, I think that's probably it. I don't think there's anything else to examine. Uh, so once again, I could see him through the people in the door, though. I don't think so. Here we go. Objection. Yes. What on earth is that eccentric contraption, Council? Oh, it's my cat flapping that, my lord. It makes a way for cats to get in and out of a room. They can cut through any door you can think of and make a new little door in the middle of it. That's right, my lord. It's a device for creating so-called cat flaps. Bring on the iris music. Yeah. I haven't heard this theme in a while. I, I wonder why um, Suzuro thinks she's a failure, though. If not, then this is helpful. And I didn't read that. I'm sure we can all work out that out for ourselves. Oh, wait. I can go to the history. What did we know you say? That's right, my lord. It's a device for creating so-called cat flaps. Small doors for cats to come and go as they please without their owners having to open the main door. Ah! But that cat lover's contrivance has no possible relevance to this case. Oh, really? Of course it doesn't. To start with, there was no cat flap on the pawnbroker's door. But there was a flap. Hmm. Not being a keeper of cats myself, I'm afraid I failed to see. What does this have to do with the matter at hand? Perhaps it would help if I described its function another way, then. This contraption is able to create a peephole in any door you can imagine in practically no time at all. I... I beg your pardon? A peephole, you say? Two nights ago, we arrived at the scene only minutes after the murder of Mr. Winderbank had taken place. That's right. According to the paperwork at the yard, it was you, your Japanese assistant, and Jones. Yes, the three of us were together, and it's recently come to my attention that my assistant made use of this device at the time. Your assistant did what? There was a people in the storeroom door. I can attest to that. Because I looked through the people myself in order to see inside the stock storeroom. This is ludicrous. What are you trying to say? I'm going to say, can we prove this though? Of course there was a people in the door. I said as much in my testimony. But it was made that night. How else could I witness the crime for pity's sake? Yes. How could you? 
What? Kanto? Can't you say what you mean? Alright, it's time. Time to strike the final blow. Slam! What I mean is this, my lord. My assistant made the people in the storeroom door, and until such time as she did, the door had no hole in it to look through. What? No! Spin, 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 spin. Objection! This is a farce. Are you really suggesting that the people in the door was... Yes, it was created only after the incident had taken place by my judicial assistant using this device. Your assistant tampered with the crime scene whilst being fully aware of the gravity of her actions? Well, it wasn't a crime scene yet, though. That is a most serious act of vandalism. For which I humbly apologize, my lord. Sorry. It was in the few minutes that I left the scene in order to pursue the Skulkin brothers and alert the police. Ah, she did it secretly. Nevertheless, in the light of this new information... I wonder why, though. Did she know something was in there? It becomes apparent that Mr. Graydon's testimony... is riddled with holes. Just much like his arm. Riddled with... Explain yourself, counsel! The majority of Mr. Graydon's testimony that appears to incriminate the defendant... is based upon what he witnessed through the peephole in the storeroom door. But if it wasn't there, then he is lying. Yes, that filthy girl shooting the man in the back. However, if at the time of the incident, that people did not exist yet in the door, there's no possible way that you could have seen what you claim to have seen. Grr. In short, your entire testimony is a pack of lies, sir. Ugh. You little gutter snipe. Order, order, order! Is there any credence in this revelation? Objection! B bullshit, my lord. None whatsoever, as my learned friend must surely realize. <laughs> exactly, this is just some cheap trick designed to discredit me. Yeah, how do we prove this? I'm afraid not, sir. Of course it is. Do you seriously expect people to believe that plaything can cut through a solid wooden door? We can probably test it. Oh yes, I designed it to be very powerful. It can cut through even the toughest of doors. That's absurd. I don't believe it for a second. Haha, <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. What? Waggy, Kiwi, time for dinner. Oh my gosh. Yay, Waggy. Who's a cute little kitty? Meow. Well... I may have vandalized the courtroom, but I proved it, didn't I? Ah, oh, young lady, this is the old Bailey. One does not make cat flaps in the old paneling at the old Bailey. <laughs> I'm, I'm not done yet, don't worry. This doesn't mean that the people in the storeroom door at Windebank was made by your machine. And there's no way you can prove that it was. No, but it's easy. What? Oh, wait a minute. Do we have a look at the door in one of these pictures? Yep, we do, and it is not there. The cat flaps my cat flap and my crate to all a fixed size. And the dimensions of the people at window banks are an exact match. Ugh. He he. Oh, sick, he's lost for words. Excellent work, Iris. Thank you. And now it's my learned student friend's turn to be lost for words, I feel. I believe your judicial assistant has already left the country for your eastern island home. Well, yes, that's true. So she can't actually testify to doing this. Then you may have some difficulty in establishing all of the facts. For the sake of argument, let's just assume the people has dimensions that are perfectly fit for this contraption. In that case, when was the people cut? The prosecution demands proof of your answer. Ah! Wait, let me try one- sorry, one more thing. I checked this picture, right? Is there a chance this picture it is there? I- oh, I think so, right? I think I see the- the cut- the cut there. And yeah, it's not there. So it's between 1 a.m. and 1.30 a.m. that it happened. 
What is the purpose of your line of inquiry, Lord Van Zykes? It's very simple, my lord. The defense argued that the people were created after the incident using this device. But now that the perpetrator has returned to her native land, she cannot testify to the fact there is no proof. Ugh. You gotta bring that up. And for as long as the defense remains unable to prove when the people was made, my learned friend's claim amounts to nothing more than a baseless accusation. What? Indeed, that is so, Lord Van Zykes. Well, counsel, I, um, don't give up now, Luno. This is the time to create your own opening and force your way through. I don't know if I can do this, but I do know one thing. Suzuto-san is the greatest judicial assistant in the world. Sorry, Iris. None ta no offense, none taken. Very well, the counsel for the defense will present evidence to support the claim made. Proof that the people in the door of Winterbank's storeroom was created after the event and not before. I f it could be either one of these, right? Yeah, well, okay, I'm gonna go with this one to show that it wasn't there. Because if I use this one, all that proves is that there is a peephole there. But if we see that during this, you know, in the situation it wasn't there, that's more credible. Take that! What are you? A print from that detective's infernal cameras again. My judicial assistant, Miss Suzuto Mikotova, is an extremely intelligent and capable woman. God, I love her so much. Which is why I never had any cause to doubt that she would have considered this scenario and made sure I had the necessary proof. And the necessary proof is this photographic print, counsel. Huh. <laughs> you should be scared, Ashley. This print shows a scene in the shop moments after the defendant entered the premises. Agreed. And it also shows the accused mercilessly wielded a gun in the direction of the defenseless broker. But, but more to the point, that's not the point we're trying to make here, it pictures the storeroom door in the background. Let me see that print again. Ah, gotcha. I, I don't believe it. This really is quite remarkable. The door to the storeroom is completely devoid of a people of any description. Oh, gotcha, Mr. Graydon. Sucks to be you. You couldn't possibly have witnessed the crime as you claimed to have done. Because at the time it happened, there was no people in the door. Oh. In other words, your testimony is a catalog of lies. You sit on a throne of lies, sir. Yeah. Ah oh, no! Damn it, Hall! Order! 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 <laughs> I'm trying to say that differently. I am satisfied that the defense has substantiated its claim beyond all reasonable doubt. This witness's testimony was entirely fallacious. Yeah. That's not the only thing we now know beyond all reasonable doubt. My learned friend's assistant's guilt can no longer be denied. The woman tampered with the crime scene. Uh, what are you trying to say? But more importantly... Good lord, there's more, Lord Van Zykes! The defense may have established a re reprehensible instance of perjury. But that is no proof that this man is the victim's killer. Uh, yes, that's right. What? I was there at the scene. It's true. And I was shot in the arm. It's true. But that's all. Oh, look, he's, he's getting a little, like, crazy, desperate. I don't know. Look at that look on his face. Yes, in fact, if you look at the circumstances, I am the victim here. Oh, please. No! I don't believe this, but they're right. As it stands now, I don't have any definitive proof that he is the culprit. Still, he can't worm his way out of it now. Iris, you know what they say. There's no point locking the cat's door after the cat has bolted. I don't know what that means. Isn't that right, Runo? 
as Hurley always says. One lie begets another. No, wait. That might have been a line I wrote for him in one of my stories. Silly me. Well, no matter who said it first, you're right. Mr. Graydon, not only did you give false testimony to the court, but the lies you told make no sense. Make no sense? What do you mean by such a remark? What you said in your testimony reveals that you know something you shouldn't have known. In other words, there is a fundamental inconsistency in your statements. What? Objection. This is provocative talk, counsel. Won't you enlighten the court? Explain this alleged inconsistency. Iris was right. One lie begets another. The inconsistency is revealed by the lies in the witness's statements. They show that Mr. Graydon had knowledge of something he shouldn't have known anything about. Namely... I was about to say the bloodstains on the coat, right? It's gotta be that. The bloodstains that were present on Miss Lestrade's coat. That's right, the victim's blood spattered all over her when she shot him. But how could you possibly have known that? Obviously, because I saw her do it through that peephole in the... Ah, oh, shit. Don't look at me. The point is not that you lied in your testimony, Mr. Graydon. It's the nature of the lie you concealed or concocted that is so revealing. You're not making any sense. But let me ask you a simple question. How is it, Mr. Graydon, that you knew of the existence of the people in the storeroom door? What? Well, obviously, I... Oh! Urgh! Has the cat got your tongue, witness? The people in the door was made after the incident occurred. And once I returned to the shop having failed to catch the two burglars... Oh, that's a good point. You shouldn't have even known about the people itself. Scotland Yard's investigators arrived immediately. Since that time, the police have been at Windowbank constantly carrying out their investigation. Isn't that right, Inspector Gregson? Um, well, yes, of course, um... The place is chock full of porn articles and my lads have to thoroughly examine them all. So I gave the order to have officers working around the clock in shifts, so we get through it all. And consequently, there's no way that you, Mr. Graydon, could have gained access to the shop. Uh-huh. Therefore, you should have known nothing about the people in the storeroom door. So the fact that its existence forms the basis of your testimony is completely inexplicable. Oh. Objection. And yet, the fact remains that Mr. Graydon did maintain that he witnessed the crime take place through the peephole in the door. How on earth is that possible? Um, who's that? Could I have a word, please, Lord Van Zykes? Speak, Inspector. It's just that I really ought to be getting back to the station now to put in my report. There's really nothing more I can add to this testimony, so it's all the same to you. Permission denied. Oh. Well, F you then. It's not all the same to me, Inspector. Not at all. Yeah, we still don't know what Greg's what Gregson's kind of role in this is. We know he's conspiring or colluding in some way with, uh, with, uh, Gr uh, what's his face? Ashley. But we don't know what is going on there. You will remain exactly where you are until this trial concludes. Uh, of course, sir. Mr. Graydon. You should have known about the existence of that peephole. Which can only mean that you must have been informed about it by somebody else. Oh! Objection. And I think I know who that is. Stop there, my learned friend. Do you realize I trust that the words you just uttered have s extremely serious implications? Yes. But the defense believes that the details about the case that Mr. Graydon claims to have seen were given to him, must have been revealed to him by a certain person before his testimony. And, in fact, we... 
Oh, maybe we saw it happening. Considering a particular clue we have, there's really only one person that could be. Who is the person in question, Council? Who gave this witness details of the crime scene to facilitate his false testimony? Well, it's gotta be him. The only one who's been acting super sus. Take that! The truth is... It can only have been you, Inspector Gregson. Eh, me? Objection. I think so. You had better have some proof to substantiate such a rash claim, my learned friend. Consider the fact that we have only been aware of Mr. Ashley Graydon's identity for the last few hours. We learnt of it only during the course of the trial today. Indeed, preparation for his testimony were made with great urgency during our hour-long recess, while the police executed the subpoena and brought the man here from the communication station. And until that time, Mr. Graydon would have had no idea. No inkling that he would suddenly be required to appear in court. Are you suggesting that until such time as he was summoned? Yes, my lord. Until then, it's reasonable to assume he knew nothing of the people. It was only once Mr. Graydon was in the stand that he realized his position. That he would have to defend himself against the accusation that he was the third intruder. Your suggestion to the court that it was while this trial was in progress that he received the information? Absolutely. So that he could commit perjury in order to save his skin. Exactly. And the only person with knowledge of the investigation that he had any contact with is you, Inspector Gregson. This this is a blooming outrage. Why would I be giving away details of our investigation to this fella, eh? Hmm. I was summoned to his lordship's chambers during the recess in any case. Had you forgotten that? Quite true. I had a number of questions regarding the events that transpired at the Pont Brokery. Which means... The first time these two laid eyes on one another was after proceedings resumed following the recess. Since then, they've been in full view in the stand. Where such illicit discussions couldn't possibly have occurred. Except for that really long time where they were just talking to one another. But, that can't be it. Ah! Oh, I've just remembered something, Runo! What is it, Iris? There was one time before, wasn't there? I think it was when Ginny was testifying. Oh yes, now you mention it. When the bailiff was dispatched to retrieve McGilda's music box on the scene of the crime. That's it. It was during the testimony. Yep, there they are. I remember finding it strange at the time. Mr. Graydon and the inspector seem to be having some kind of secret discussion. <laughs> Very smart, but I guess they had no choice. It would have been possible for you to give Mr. Graydon the information he needed then. You little toe rag! You're making all this up! I'm, I'm a respectful Scotland Yard inspector for crying out loud! Why would I do something like that? Why would I be giving away confidential details to the likes of this bloke? Um, these fish and chips never tasted so good! Admittedly, you wouldn't have had any reason to do something like that for no gain. But perhaps... It was part of a deal of some kind. Then it starts to make more sense. What deal, Council? I wonder if perhaps in exchange for details about the people at the crime scene, Mr. Graydon agreed to give a certain something to the inspector? Maybe the disc? I'm sure I need not remind the inspector that, if found to be true, striking a deal of any kind with a witness would be considered a gross case of malfeasance. Well, well, I... Slam! It's becoming clear that jumping in with accusations is this Nipponese student's specialty. I... I don't do that. Psh, shut up. But with the stakes so high, the prosecution is not prepared to listen to faceless charges. It is incumbent on the defense now to present evidence to, in support of this diabolical claim. Uh, evidence? Just what are you proposing that the inspector demanded of the witness in return? The court must see proof of this alleged deal. If Inspector Gregson really did strike a deal with Mr. Graydon, then logically, there's only one thing he could have asked for. 
That must be it. Bruno, you think it could be? Yes. It's the missing link that would join all the dots together in this puzzle. I must press you for an answer now, Council. What evidence explains the nature of the alleged deal that Inspector Gregson made with the witness? Are we talking about the disc? That's the only thing I can think of. I'm just taking a quick look, but... <laughs> Unless it's th this... Oh, maybe it is this. Okay, I was thinking the disc. Oh, now I want to save, because I was so sure. I'm like, the disc is the only thing I can think of. But this has not come up yet. We know that Gregson is in these stories a lot. And I know it might be this. I'm going to... This, my lord, this shows exactly what the deal between these two men was all about. Well, Inspector, what do you have to say for yourself? Okay, I don't think so. I, I guess it was the disc? Dear me, it would appear this answer has no way s satiated your appetite. Some of that bite should be directed at my learned friend, I feel. Gah! I'm very surprised that Gregzy. There must have been a compelling reason for him to give away se case secrets like that. Well, what's the most important thing to the inspector? What could have motivated him to do it? Hmm. For most Scotland Yard inspectors that I know, left donuts would put nothing about their duty to policing. So do we have some evidence that's related to the inspector and his duties, I wonder? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go with the disc. I'm gonna go with my original thought. Okay, what's that? Dang it! I should have gone with my gut. Inspector Gregson? Besides this murder, is it not true that you've been working on another very important case? What? Are oh, you getting that now, Sunshine? Is it possible that this other top secret case is what's alluded to in this newspaper article here? The classified secrets being leaked overseas from the Ministry of Justice? How? How the bleeding Nora could you? We discovered during the course of this trial, the music box deposited at Windebanks by Magnus the Gilded. A special music box designed to play two discs at once. It would seem very likely now that encoded on the pair of discs that were in the Gilded's possession are the leaked classified secrets. Ah, uh, I feel dumb when like, I got, this is what I was going to go with and I just, my mind just went somewhere else. I'm like, oh wait, maybe it's this other thing. But I was wrong. He does not look too happy. So I put it to you, Inspector, that in order to recover the second of the disc containing those secrets, you covertly made a deal with Mr. Graydon in which you exchanged the disc for details of the case. You. You little. Ah! Oh, what? No, my fish and chips. I'm spilling them everywhere. Order, order, order. On the day of the incident, when we met at Windebanks, you said this. Good thing you have such a good memory, Rienosuke. I'll be taking out whatever it is that McGill is down to the yard, thank you very much. So, hand it over. No, I don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine, that is. Mine. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGill has to be taken in as evidence now. Colin Yard already knew at that time, isn't that right? That Magnus McGill was involved in the stealing of government secrets. My orders were, recover the medium used to convey the secrets leaked from the ministry, and do it on the QT. Strictly hush hush. And that explains why, when I presented this disc as evidence to the court, you objected so heavily, I presume. Because you knew that it contained highly confidential information. No, I mean, not likely. I mean, I wasn't that sure of it myself. I realized there was a possibility, that's all. Inspector, surely, surely you're not saying that in order to acquire the second of these music box discs, you did indeed reveal confidential details of the crime scene to the witness, to aid and abet this man in giving false testimony. There's no other way that Mr. Graydon could have known of this, the existence of the peephole. It's the only explanation. A deal was, str was struck between these two men. 
No, gah. Got you. Nah, got you now, suckers. If, and I stress if this sobering assertion turns out to be founded in truth, it would mean that the second disc is as we speak here in this very courtroom. Wait, what? In, in this room? How could you possibly make a claim like that? Of course, Inspector Gregson is a Scotland Yard detective. What? What's that supposed to mean, eh? As a seasoned policeman, the inspector would have approached this alleged deal with caution. Certainly, he would not have accepted a gentleman's agreement in this matter. No, he would have in insisted on having the article agreed upon in the palm of his hand. Good gracious. Then, you mean to say... Inspector Gregson already has the item in question in his possession? He has the second disc actually on his person? Yes. That is correct. The defense demands the inspector is searched at once. Definitely. They could only have struck a deal with each other when Ginny was testifying before. And Gregory hasn't moved from the witness stand since. Ah, that's right. My lawyer, please, order an examination on his personal effects immediately. Hmm. Well, inspector. Huh. Hold on, let me just finish these. This young lad wants to tone down his imagination. He's insulted me and my profession quite enough. Uh-oh. Is he, is, is he not have it? However, if it'll put this matter to bed and dispel any doubts about my involvement, then I'll happily submit to a body search. What? He's going to agree to it. I presume you're aware of the precipice on which you now teach him, my learned student friend. You made a most serious allegation against Scotland Yard here. If, following the search of the inspector's personal effects, no disc is found, you will be deemed unfit for court service. This trial will end, and my country's government will formally demand of yours that you are severely reprimanded. But no pressure. That sounds serious. Indeed. To have a visiting student make such defamatory remarks about our country's most senior police force is not something Her Majesty's government will be able to overlook. You're just threatening Luna because you're scared. The accusation is beyond serious. You must be prepared for grave consequences. Let's see what happens. It's true. I can't imagine Gregson would have accepted a gentleman's agreement for something so critical. This must have physically changed hands, which means the inspector should have it. But somehow, something doesn't feel quite right here. Very well, counsel. You know the implications, so let me ask you one final time. Yeah. Yes, my lord. Do you still persist in formally requesting a search of the inspector's personal effects? Oh boy, oh boy. No, I, it's not search him. Yes, the defense formally demands the search be conducted. Well, don't say you weren't warned. But your typical Nipponese stubbornness may well land you in hot water this time. Perhaps the lesson will do you some good. Fair enough. I've got nothing to hide. Oh, I know, I know. When he was choking when he was choking out Nash. Did he slip it on Nash? I was I was thinking my first guess was gonna be what's his face? It was gonna be um Ashley. I don't know why I keep forgetting his name. I should remember that name. Should have been Ashley. Um, but I bet you when he went and strangled Nash, he probably slipped it on him. So I got excited there. Bailiff, conduct a search of the ins- Objection. Nope, not so fast. That was a that was a weenie slap, Greenosuke. The defense demands a search, but not of Inspector Gregson. What? Now, what's all this about? I'm the one you're accusing, aren't I? I thought you went wanted to search me. I hope I'm right. <laughs> I feel like I am. No, no, Inspector. Not you. Somebody else. What's the meaning of all this, eh? Lost it at last, have you, sunshine? The court shouldn't have put up with this nonsense. You're being completely irrational. I think I got your number. Be quiet, all of you. But, uh... I don't know who that was. Oh, Iris? Be quiet, all of you! Reno's doing what you all told him to do and having the courage of his conviction. 
please you respect that and listen to what he has to say in good faith. Because that's the British way. Pat being pulled off by a little girl. Love to see it. Well said, young lady. Indeed, this court is in awe of the defense counsel's conviction and eagerly awaits his next words. <laughs> you what? Now, don't be hasty, my lord. If I'm not mistaken about the things I've seen in court today, I'm fairly sure that I know who has that disc at the moment. There's only one person it can be. Counsel, of whom do you request a search now? I hope I'm right. Give Nash Skulkin a big old body search. Take that! Of my lord, Mr. Nash Skulkin. Nash Skulkin. Well, I never. Eh? Blimey! Me? Him? Very well then. Bailiff, restrain the witness and conduct a thorough search of his, of his personal effects. Holding. Hey, my lord. Inspector. Scotland Yard, um, have to object to the search. Objection. I don't think so. Unfortunately for you, Inspector, your objections carry no weight here. Eh? In this courtroom, only the prosecution and the defense have the authority to object. But... But Lord Van Zykes, I thought we were bros. I have no idea what forces are in play that might influence your actions. But personally, I have no intention of obstructing the course of this trial. Ah! Bailiff, carry out the search. Now hold on a bow. I, I don't know nothing. No, nothing about no disc. You probably don't even know it's on him. Cut it out! Ah, no! Get your hands off me! Here, my lord, in, in the witness's pocket. I found this. Good lord, that's... Another music box disc. I don't know nothing about it. Nothing. That is the second music box disc left behind by Magnus McGilded. Is it not, Inspector Gregson? Uh, no? Ah, oh, my fish and chips are flying everywhere. Damn it. Order, order, order! Mr. Skulkin, what have you had to say for yourself? Gordon Bennett. I mean, just Gordon Flamin' Bennett. How'd that get there? I swear I didn't know nothing about that disc. Honest to God. Counsel, would you please explain what exactly is going on here? The alleged deal that was struck was between this witness and this detective, no? Without question, my lord. Then for pity's sake, why on earth was this man in possession of the disc that the inspector traded for information? Inspector Gretchen is a shrewd, shrewd, calculating man who rarely loses his composure. But at one particular point in this trial, he exhibited some unusual behavior <laughs> that's putting it mildly, for a brief moment. I don't recall. What unusual behavior? Ah! It was... Yes, during my cross-examination of Mr. Graydon. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, when you left the pawn brokery that night, was it by any chance with the second disc in your jacket pocket? I admit to nothing of the sort. When Mr. Graydon answered my questions, the inspector appeared to have grabbed Nash Skulkin by his coat and was shaking him violently. For no reason at all. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know. Thought me noggin was gonna fall clean off there, did? I was wishing I'd been born as me brother, I was. And what exactly happened to make the detective attack you like that? I ain't got a clue. He just suddenly turned and grabbed me whistle like that and started shaking me. Why the blazes didn't you mention the third gun when we got you down to the station? That's what he said. He held it right down my ear hole, he did. Me head's still throbbing now. Hmm. The way the detective behaved then was extremely out of character. But looking back now, it must have been then that he did it. That was the opportunity Inspector Gretchen created for himself in order to hide the disc. Well, bless my wig. He hid it. You busted, but I'm afraid I failed to comprehend the motive here. 
the detective had acquired the desk he was after, why on earth would he then proceed to hide it in another man's pocket? This is a court of law. He could have submitted the item as evidence. He was trying to hide it. It would appear, my lord, that the inspector was not at liberty to do that. Why ever not? As the man himself revealed earlier, his current assignment has some special conditions. My orders were, recover the medium used to convey the secrets leaked from the Ministry, and do it on the QT. Strictly hush hush. Yeah, so he couldn't tell us what was going on. Hush hush. A top secret assignment, is it? As far as we're aware, the information stolen comes from confidential government communications. It would seem that if that information were to be revealed in court as evidence, it would be problematic. Does that sum up the situation, Inspector? I guess. I'm operating under district direct orders from the Ministry. I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to answer that question. So, realizing there was a chance that you may be searched here in court, you took steps to hide the disc you had acquired from the witness. Ah, does this mean... He only pretended to attack Mr. Skulkin in order to get close enough to him to slip the second disc into his pocket. So it was all a pretense? You betcha. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. You meddling lawyers. Well now, Inspector Gregson. And you, Mr. Graydon. Are you prepared to admit to the accusation made against you of this alleged deal? It's gone on long enough, guys. The jig is up. Admit to it, yours truly, please. Mr. Graydon. Clearly our Eastern visitor is an uncommonly active imagination. However, there's no proof that I passed that disc to the inspector. Objection. But, but then, how do you explain the reason why you knew about the people? I'm under no obligation to explain. What? Yes, I lied in my testimony that I admit, so sentence me accordingly. But that is all I admit. Murder, leaking government secrets, striking a deal with the detective. All of it is this young Eastern man's fancy. I have no idea what any of that is about. What? They will just not confess, will they? Or him. Specifically. Well, what about you then, Inspector Gregson? Do you admit to making a deal with Mr. Graydon in order to acquire the disc? Ladies and gents of the jury, as a Scotland Yard inspector, I will declare this and nothing more. Uh, I am acting on the best interests of the country. Whatever I've done, it's been in the name of justice. So, as members of the public of this fine country, I like to think that justice will be your guiding light when you're making your decision. I'll be trying to appeal to the jury, is he? Hmm. This is quite a quandary, in quandary indeed. Rarely have I encountered such extraordinary tumultuousness in the concluding of a trial. Nevertheless, in the absence of any further evidence to, my to be presented, I believe it is time that we put the matter to the jury for their final leanings. Well, now, as a fellow servant of Queen and Country, I must say I sympathize with the old inspector. Yes, he's a dependable man, I'm quite sure. In service, one becomes a good judge of character. Even crossing your eyes doesn't help when it comes to looking at this case. It's all blurred to me. Well, as a fellow professional, I like to put my faith in the detective, really. Where did his highly skilled operator stop? Currently in presence of idols, stop. Detective has very much trust in eyes. More than this, I cannot say. I don't believe it. These six jurors are... They're going to believe Gregson? If they declare their decision, decision now... Is Jenny going to be found guilty? If I don't manage to produce some definitive evidence right now, then... We're going to lose. Are there some, are there some proof that Graydon killed Mr. Winderbank? Or stole those government secrets? Or some evidence to force Gregson into admitting that he struck a deal with the witness. Well then, counsel, 
I think it's time I impose on the jurors to declare their final decisions, you know? That is, unless you have some compelling evidence you have thus far not presented to the court. If I let the judge call on the jurors to announce their leanings, Gina will be found guilty. So there's no choice then, Runo. You have to throw some more evidence at them. This is it now. It all comes down to this. Who do I present evidence against? Gregson or Graydon? Leave it to the jury. No, we're definitely not doing that. Oh, I don't know. So I need either some proof that Graydon killed Mr. Windervank. Or stole those government secrets. Or some evidence to force Gregson into admitting that he struck a deal with the witness. I feel like it's going to be that. I think it's going to be that. It's going to be Gregson. We have to get to Gregson. Okay, but how are we going to do that? Maybe if we steal his fish and chips. I don't know. Because doesn't he... Gregson needs the music box disc. Right? Like, if he, if he gets these discs, he still needs the box. I really think it has to do with Gregson, so I'm going to go with Gregson. Inspector Gregson? There is one final piece of evidence I would like you to see. Eh? What's that, then? If you refuse to acknowledge that you did in fact strike a deal with the witness here today, then you leave us no choice but to examine this piece of evidence thoroughly. Well, go on. This is my last chance. Looks like I'm going to have to force his hand here. One final piece of evidence to get the detective to admit to the deal he clearly struck with Graydon. Okay, this doesn't seem like it's going in the direction I wanted it to. <laughs> gosh darn it, I don't know. Oh gosh. I'm actually, I'm really stumped. Should I just... I really don't think it's this anymore. I mean, it could be. It was deposited at Winwick two days before the black overcoat. Take that! Oh my gosh, did I do it? Is that Mr. McGilder's peculiar music box, Council? Yes. With the disc already in place, ready to play. Oh, duh. He doesn't want the he doesn't want the uh, the secrets getting out. So now we have both discs. So we can. I wasn't thinking about it like that. Okay, so we can kind of threaten him and say, "We're gonna play this right now." I think perhaps now would be a good time to listen to the sound produced by the music box again. Only this time. With the second disc we've just discovered set in place as well. Goodness, this disc council. <laughs> no, wait. I I can't let you do that. Why not? But because um, well, because it's got nothing to do with this case. That's why. I think not. Not true, Inspector. Eh? The defense has already proposed. That the sounds heard by the court earlier from this music box were part of a Morse code message. We know that Morse code compromises, comprises of two distinct tones. Ah, uh, the music in this game is so good. The defense believes that the second disc contains the second tone needed to complete the message. And now we have a chance to confirm that theory. For crying out loud, Sunshine, we're talking about state secrets here. If you go letting the whole courtroom hear confidential information like that, it's... It's treason. Then do you admit the charge? That in order to protect those state secrets, you engaged in unlawful dealings with the witness? You're... You're mad. If you let that secret information out into the public domain, you will... You will be making an enemy of the entire British government, you idiot. I may be an idiot. But I'm an idiot who's gonna take you down. Let's not forget, Inspector, that you, a Scotland Yard officer, leak confidential case details to a witness. That you continue to lie to the court, and all because by fair means or foul, you're determined to do your duty. Well, by fair means or foul, I'm prepared to do mine. Don't you dare. I will stop at nothing to protect my client. I don't care who I make an enemy of. Well said, my Nipponese friend. My lord, if you please, the court must hear the sounds made by that music box. Come on, Van Zyke, for Pete's sake. Stop him! Objection! Look my boots, Gregson! Inspector, you should know my method by now. I'm a prosecutor. I'm no Scotland Yard puppet. Uh. 
in this court with my duties to the law. So let me propose a toast to uncovering the truth by fair means or foul. No! My fish, my chips, my dignity! Very well. The defense is stance here, and that of the prosecution has been made very clear, I feel. Therefore, in accordance with the defense's request, the court will now listen as this music box is set in operation once more. Let's do it. This time with the second disc in place and both discs playing simultaneously. Come on, Gregson, don't let it happen. He's gonna speak out, right? Oh, listen to that. It's it's unmistakable now. I don't know who's talking. It's Morse code. All right, all right. I admit it. Whatever you want. But for the love of God, shut that blooming box up. It is done. Let me ask you again then, Inspector Gregson. Did you, or did you not, strike a deal with the witness next to you in the stand, Mr. Ashley Graydon? Specifically, did you furnish the witness with confidential case details in exchange for this music box disc? Did you reveal the existence of the peephole in the pawnbroker's storeroom door, Inspector? I did. Aha, you're... You're done for, Graydon. Stop! What are you doing, man? It's all exactly like the young Eastern lawyer said. When the trial was doomed after the recess, and we were stood here in the stand together, that's when he approached me with the deal. Shut up, you imbecile! Shut up! Fight, fight, fight! Psst, you there! Oh wait, you're the detective who turned up the pawn broker the other day, aren't you? I may have something you're looking for, Inspector, with me at this very moment. So, how about a trade? I suggest you accept. Or information that may make certain individuals uncomfortable will soon become very public indeed. Ah, a little bribery. I couldn't let that information become public knowledge. Not under any circumstances. So, I accepted the man's proposal and told him details about the case that should have put him in the clear. The people in the storeroom door and the bloodstains on the overcoat. By giving false testimony, this witness intended to have the defendant wrongly accused of murder. Inspector, you knew that. Yet you still revealed those details to facilitate the witness's perjury. Yeah, my bad. I did. But then it turned out the peephole had only been made that night, after the incident took place. Scotland Yard wasn't aware of that, if I'm perfectly honest. Well, Mr. Graydon? What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, uh. There's nothing and no one left for you to hide behind. You struck a deal with the inspector in order to escape conviction of a very serious crime. Namely this. You are the third intruder who broke into the pawn brokery on the night in question. And you perpetrated the murder of the proprietor, Mr. Pop Winderbank. Uh, you. You. Time for a dance. Hiya! Traitor! Oh my gosh! I'm gonna kill you! No! Get off me! Get off me! Ah, ah, ah. I will kill you! Oh, what was that? <coughs> Bailiff! Bailiff! Restrain that man! At once! No, get off me! I demand justice! <laughs> oh, good lord. That's it then. It's all over. Wow. That definitely was a long one. A long section. About two hours and 40 into my recording. Dot, dot, dot. Ellipses, ellipses, ellipses. Lots of ellipses. I despise my life growing up. Those slums are vile places. I was cursed from birth. Born into poverty, the son of a penniless artisan. My parents did nothing but quarrel all day long. 
what little money they had was never spent on me. Aw, oh, he looked so defeated. So I set about studying to better myself. To one day escape from that hellhole. And you eventually became a communications officer. I admire your determination. But then you decided to try to sell government secrets? Why? Isn't it obvious? Because I wanted money. Even now, years later, the nightmares of my life in the slums wake me in the small hours. I wanted to drown them out with more money than anyone who lived in that squalor could ever imagine. Then one day I met him. My gilded. Mr. Magnus McGilded. Yeah, fiend with a square talent you, you are. Or a queer talent you are. I have money to throw you away if you're interested. Ah, all you need to do is go along with me little plan now. And the rest is history. I was to steal the Ministry's telegraphic message logs, and McGilded would bury them for a handsome sum. As I was responsible for inspections of the Ministry's communications office, it was a simple enough task. The lure of the devil's offerings. How easy it is to succumb. But you must surely have realized the seriousness of the crime you were committing. And for that reason, I took great lengths to ensure that my actions were untraceable. By using the music box. Aha, yes. My father was a brickmaker, though my mother divorced him when I was still a child. Yes, Mr. Mason Milverton. That's right. He was very skilled with his hands. He'd once been a music box maker's apprentice. I imagined the skills would be sufficient to create a machine that could generate Morse code. So I sought out my father again to employ his services. Aha. It was the first time I'd seen him since I left the slums ten years earlier. Oh, look at that. Oh, gosh. Oh no, I haven't had to voice him yet, have I? Look at you, Ashley. What a fine gent you've become, eh? He was a different man to the one in my memory. A thin, frail old man. But poverty had never broken him. Never corrupted him like it had me. I was sure that he wouldn't help me if I told him the real reason. So I made up a story. I've got some work for you, father. I need some music box discs made. Music box discs, eh? A musician friend of mine has written some music he wants to sell to the public. Oh wait, this is Ashley talking. A musician friend of mine has written some music he wants to sell to the public. I brought the score with me. There are two, actually. I'd be delighted. Oh, I'd be delighted, son. It's been 20 years since I did any work like this, though. Fetch my tools, would you? They're in the loft. That's how I had to make the two discs. Thereby splitting the information in two. You are taking considerable precautions indeed. It was to protect myself as much as anything. It meant that I could deal with McGilded in two separate transactions. The first involved the first of the two discs and the music box for playing them. I exchanged them with McGilded for ten guineas. Then on receipt of the second disc, he would pay a thousand guineas. So, what happened on the Omnibus two months ago was the second part of a deal. The exchange of the second disc? Yes. I'd sold the man information that way a number of times already. But it seems he became reluctant to part with his money. Well, that doesn't quite make sense, Mr. Graydon. For why was it on that Omnibus two months ago? Your father, Mr. Milverton, was the one dealing with Mr. McGilded and not yourself. When I received the thousand guineas after my first completed drawings with McGilded, dealings, I decided to give two hundred to my father for his troubles. Oh. But my father realized something was amiss. In time, he worked out that I must be involved in something dubious. And when he did, he said to me, Next time there's an exchange, you will let your old man do it, understand? Otherwise, I won't take your money anymore. Ah, that was my father's way of dealing with it, I suppose. 
climb into the omnibus, hand over the second disc, and take the money from a gilded. That's it. He had no idea what was actually on the disc I'd asked him to make. He never knew. Just like I'll never know why everything went so horribly wrong that night. All I know is that the disc was taken from him, and he never returned home. Yeesh. Very tragic. It was only then that I found out what sort of monster McGilded really was. Oh yeah, what happened to him? We still know how he died. So after ten years of not once uttering it, I swore on my father's name. Huzzah! To exact revenge. Oh, so was it you? You killed him? Revenge? As anyone with even the remotest knowledge of the man will no doubt be able to imagine, the Gilded brought all his wealth and influence to bear in the most despicable of ways. Crush. Up to crush any semblance of justice in his trial. Ah, yes. The crime scene was tampered with, evidence was fixed, and witnesses were bribed. That trial two months ago was a farce from start to finish. My feet had barely touched with the soil back then, and I walked into that hornet's nest completely unaware of the sinister background to it all. I'd made plenty of money out of my dealings with the Gilded by then, so I spared nothing in my arrangements two months ago. I knew exactly who to hire. If you're willing to pay the price, there are people in the city willing to do anything you ask. The Gilded himself had shown me that. Or, are you saying that I think you have the picture now? After he twisted everything to his favor in this courtroom to ensure that he walked free. I took matters into my own hands and delivered the justice that monster deserved. Setting him on fire. The tragic accident following the trial here two months ago. Oh, was planned and executed by yours truly. The killed his death that day. Was caused by this man? Everything is ready, sir. If you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. What's well, this, officer? It is sooner than I was led to believe. I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There were some changes to the schedule. Oh, is this him by any chance? Well, I must be making tracks now. It is time for the inspection. They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. Was that policeman who came to tell McGill that he could examine the omnibus again? Was that him? That's right. An imposter hired- oh, okay. Hired by me. I thought it was him again. I'm like, man, they really gotta screen these bailiffs. They all look the same. <laughs> McGill did use his wealth to manipulate the trial. He paid people to it, adulterate the omnibus with all manner of false evidence. He threatened witnesses to lie in their testimony. So I gave the man a taste of his own medicine. Once the omnibus was doused in paraffin, one of my sham policemen ushered McGilded inside and sent him on a one-way journey to hell. Oh man, this is getting gruesome. But he deserved it, no doubt. An eye for an eye. That's how I avenged my father's death. A spine-chilling account indeed. But that wasn't the end for me. There was a loose end, you see. A loose end? Yes, I should think it's obvious. This second disc, which my father had taken to exchange with McGilded. Ah, yes. There was indeed no mention of it in the man's trial two months ago. Clearly because it had been removed from the scene of the crime. When I realized it was missing, I remembered something. Something from the first time I dealt with McGilded. Let's hear it. This is the first of the two discs in the music box you need to play them. Well, look at that now. What an ingenious little invention. So then, as promised, ten guineas for you, young man. Wh what's this? Windebank's pawnbrokery? Aye, to the pawnbroker's ticket, so it is. You can use it to redeem an article and deposit there for thee. 
There's no need to give me a name. Or to give a name, just hand over the ticket and tell the fiend the watchword. I've put a jewel in pawn for you. I'll fetch a good ten guineas if you sell it so well. I've never heard of a pawn broker being used in quite that way before. Have you not, Mr. Graydon? London pawnbrokers are very useful places, you know. Each one is like an extraordinary secure vault. He had this all planned out to the T. Dot, 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 dot. Dot, 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 So I knew that if he'd taken steps to hide the disc, it would be in that pawnbrokery somewhere. And that on the night he killed my father, he must have entrusted the ticket to someone. Yes, to Gina. I remember now, that when we first met you at Winterbank that afternoon two days ago, you had a description of Miss Lestrade written down. How did you know who you were looking for? From the trial, that pickpocket's testimony was clearly peculiar. Anyone could see that. I realized immediately that she was another of a gilded pawn, that he must have threatened her somehow. I was fairly convinced it would be her who had the ticket. So I started to make some inquiries. I had a strong suspicion the girl would come after the woodwork of the redemption deadline. And he was absolutely right. And yes, sure enough, she did. All I needed to do was wait until the girl went to Winterbank to redeem the articles. But unfortunately, she redeemed only McGilda's overcoat and the one disc that was in its pocket. The all important music box with the second disc inside was missing. Because it had already been forfeited two days earlier. Right. But I was unaware of that fact. Had I not been, I could have avoided my nighttime excursion. Meanwhile, as our investigation into the stolen government secrets was progressing, we picked up on the fact that McGilded was involved. Inspector, you recovered fast. Yes, he, my neck was almost snapped, but I'm good now. My orders were to recover the stolen information as quickly as possible. So we started gathering the fellow's possession and examined whatever we could lay our hands on. We had a full-scale investigation going on at the yard, but we had to keep it as quiet as we could. Then when the inspector here took the disc from me in the pawn brokery that day, I became nervous. I was sure the music box and the second disc were still there in the shop somewhere. So I knew that it was a race against time. I had to find those articles before the police did. So that's what prompted, prompted you to break into the place that same night. You had to get it before him. With the help of your old friends, the Skulkin Brothers. Yes, them. What happened that night in the pawn brokery, I can only describe as a nightmare. While Nash and Ringo were searching the counter, I locate the music box I'd sold to McGilded on the shelves of forfeited articles. And the second disc was inside. Yes. I slipped it into my pocket with a very deep sigh of relief. But then, something entirely unexpected happened. What are you doing in my shop? Bang! Yep. Windebanks caught you. A gunshot rang out in the shop, and I felt a sharp pain in my left arm, because that was him shooting you. The broker fired his gun, and the bullet pierced your limb. Yes, exactly. But unfortunately... I decided to bring my own gun with me that night, just in case. Bang! Dead. Before I knew what was happening, I'd fired back. The man had already turned to flee. I hadn't intended to fire in his direction, much less kill him. But unfortunately for both of us, the bullet hit home. It struck him in the middle of his back as he fled through the storeroom door for refuge. A sorry, sorry tale. It all took place in the blink of an eye. I don't imagine Nash and Ringo even realized what had happened at first. I was terrified, so I fled. And that's the whole story. That's everything that happened at Winterbanks on that wretched night. Oh, he looks so disheveled. <laughs> Compared to his posh, uh, you know, appearance. No words. Just looks. Bring out the confetti! Woo! Let's 
Okay. Earlier, you called McGilded a monster. A man who used his wealth and influence to distort the facts and escape justice for the crime of murder. What tragic irony. For what you have done is exactly the same. True enough. You become the very monster you saw and despise so deeply in McGilded. Yes, I think I have. Ah. Uh. Well, guys, feel slightly bad for him. Yeah, epic music. Well, this has been a long and exhausting trial. And Mike is losing his voice. Yeah, really. However, it would seem that at last we have arrived at the truth. Inspector Gregson, what of Mr. Ashley Graydon? He shot himself, my lord. Just kidding. He's been restrained, my lord, and is being escorted to the yard. He'll be charged with the murder of Mr. Winderbank. And the stealing of government secrets. Very good. And you, Inspector. Regrettably, you will have to face charges yourself. I was hoping you'd forget, sir. Yes, my lord. Of course. It transpires that you were complicit in helping a criminal escape justice. That fact remains whether or not you were doing so in the line of duty. The crime is a serious one, Inspector. And inexcusable. Now to the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. Oh, uh, yeah. It is time for the final adjudication. Is the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Yes, sir. Garrett of Squadron standing by, sir. This is really it now. The last push, the final call, the finishing whistle. My men are ready to deliver their verdict. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will now declare your final decision to the court. All together now. Guilty! <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, you had one job. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Yeah. Not guilty. Not guilty. It would be funny if not one of them guilty. still said guilty. The Russian guy's like, not guilty. Or guilty. He's like, Damn you. Yes, tip those scales back in our favor. Ha ha ha! That's the stuff! I'm off the hook! Yay! Finally, Runo! You finally managed to do it! Finally is the word. I really wasn't sure if we'd come out on top for a while there. Susie was right. You're the best lawyer in the world. Oh, stop. Mr. Lestrade, I'm not finished with you yet. Oh, yeah. She's in deep, deep trouble. Eh? Eh? What, why are you looking at me like that for? Before you start enjoying your freedom, there are certain other crimes to consider, huh? Eh? Oh, yeah. Two months ago, in my courtroom, no less, you gave false testimony, did you not? And in relation to the trial today, not only did you unlawfully enter Winterbeck's pawn brokery, you also attempted to abscond with Mr. McGilded's property, it seems. Eh? I never done nothing of the sort. Of course not. It's not like you were gleefully wearing McGilded's coat in your cell yesterday or anything. Aw, and just when I was getting excited about throwing a party for Ginny this evening. And turning our attention to the defense. That's right, we may have done some shady stuff too. Determining that when playing together, the music box disc contained a message in Morse code was... Well, it was certainly a most unexpected revelation, counsel. Quite so, my lord. The prosecution was caught entirely off guard. In fact, I think we should applaud my learned friend's courage here today. I propose a toast. Pull out your grape juice, Ryanosuke. It's under the desk. To demanding that government secrets be dis disseminated before the entire courtroom. Ah. V very sorry about that. It was the only way that I could get Inspector Gregson to admit to what he'd done, so... If I may say something on that point, I know he's talking. Isn't that? Yeah, I thought so. It's um about the sounds produced by the music box before. I do wonder if that was really most code most code at all. What? What are you saying, madam? Oh well, it's just that I'm really rather fanatical when it comes to most code. You see, 
So much so that the whole world seems to be covered in dots and dashes to me, in fact. Goodness, madam. An unhealthy level of obsession, one feels. But I must say that, in my opinion, the sound produced by those two discs were nothing more than that. A meaningless series of two different tones. What? What? Can can that really be? If it wasn't Morse code, af Morse code after all? Is it a trick? Heh. <laughs> Weenie slam. My lord, the defense would like to listen to the music box again. Are you off your nut? How many times do I have to tell you? Those discs contain minstrel secrets and sunshine. This courtroom is not an appropriate forum to discuss the nature of the government communications. We know McGill conspires to trade national secrets for their enemies. Secrets acquired from Mr. Graydon. Now that the man has admitted to his crimes, we have no need to pursue the matter further. Ugh. That's really going to bother me. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get over it. Mr. Lestrade? Yeah, my lord? That what you have seen today here in this courtroom has been extremely disturbing. Falsified evidence, intimidation, perjury, a grim catalogue of depravity, an appealing experience, an appalling experience to befall any child. Come on, it ain't nothing I don't see most days in the back slums. I beg your pardon? If you're weak, you pay for it. That's just how life goes. Gina. What a sad, horrible life she's led. But look, I reckon I worked something out today. The world ain't fair, but if you want it to change, you've got to start at home. You've got to change how you, you are yourself. Wise words. Well, that's a very laudable lesson, I would say. We all learned a valuable life lesson today. You're still in deep shit, Gina. I usually look forward to the born again Miss Lestrade never gracing my courtroom with her presence again. Until next game. Ha ha ha. Now, with regard to the murder of Mr. Pot Windebank, proprietor of a pawnbrokery business on Baker Street, I hereby declare the defendant as Gina Lestrade. Not guilty! Woohoo! Yes, bring down the confetti. And the fireworks. Oh, <laughs> Gina, calm down. <laughs> Woohoo! <I'll tell> you, <laughs> the roof of the courtroom just blows up. <laughs> I'll see you in court, young lady. That is all. Court is adjourned. That was funny, though, that she had a fireworks cannon on her. Oh, man. Such fun. Oh, just you and me, Van Zykes. Let's have a drink, partner. On a personal note, I must say you've surprised me, my Far Eastern friend. Ah. Oh. Despite being a Nipponese, you saw through the pretense of the malice that festered within that Englishman. And at the same time, saw through the grime to the surprising heart of the, your English client. You have a curious talent for judging character. Especially considering our very different cultures. That'd be true. I don't think there's anything curious about it. Do tell. Whether we're from the Empire of Great Britain or the Empire of Japan. We're all human beings. We're not so very different on the inside. You know, I took this case for one very simple reason. To lock swords with you once again. Here in the courtroom. You did? I'm flattered. When I encountered you the first time two months ago, it reminded me of toasting friendship and trust with another Nipponese, only to find my trust betrayed. Oh. Through you, I hope to look into the eyes of the man I once knew and try to understand. Are you talking about his, like, uh, mentor? Like, a uh, you mentioned something earlier today about total betrayal at the hands of the Japanese. What happened exactly? Well, you may ask. And one day, when the time comes, you will learn the answer, whether you like it or not. We still have one more game to go, Ryanosuke. Don't rush things. 
Alright, then I'll wait for that day if I must. I wonder if he'll be the prosecutor in the next game? Or I wonder if we'll get a new prosecutor. I'm sure, regardless, I'm sure he's gonna be part of it. Coming to be known as the Reaper of the Bailey in my retirement from service five years ago. It gives me cause to wonder if our meeting has some deeper purpose. So, farewell, my learned Nipponese fellow. Until we meet again. It's interesting. I like that they're leaving some mysteries, you know, for the next game. I feel like usually each game kind of wraps itself up. Which I don't mind that either, because you feel like it's complete. But knowing that we have another game to play, it's kind of nice. That we still have some secrets left. Hopefully we learn them in the next game. 17th of April, 5.24pm, The Old Bailey, Defendant's Antechamber. It's done! It's over at last! But... Where's Iris disappeared to? Ah! Congratulations, Gina! I knew it all along. I knew that you were innocent. Hey, don't give me that. Well, you did what you said, Mr. Nara Odo. You believed in me, right up to the end. You're as odd as your name. What's odd about it? I told you I had faith in you, didn't I? You gotta believe in me. No one ever had before, see? Kept the promise, I mean. Properly. That's awful. I figured something out today. All my life. Growing up in the slums, I've never trusted no one. But that's just because I've been scared of being stabbed in the back. I mean, the more you trust someone, the more it hurts when they let you down. Yes, I think I can understand that. After all, I had a taste of it in that trial two months ago. I chose to trust someone and paid for it. That betrayal left a big scar. Yeah, we trusted the leprechaun. You know though, Gina, I worked something out quite recently too. Trusting someone else? It's really an exercise in learning to trust yourself. And when your gut tells you it's the right thing to do, and your trust is rewarded, there's no better feeling in the world. I think I have you to thank for reminding me of that valuable lesson. Oh, well, if you say so, don't make a fat lot of sense to me, though. I'm trying to say that putting my faith in you, Gina, has been a real pleasure. For crying out loud, pack it in! <laughs> but I suppose I sort of feel the same way. I mean, sometimes trusting someone else is, you know, alright. Thanks. Thanks, Gina. This is the way I see it, Ryanosuke. Kazuma, my buddy. A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. Wise words. After this experience, I'm starting to feel like I understand what you mean. Kazuma, am I living up to your expectations? Am I turning out to be the lawyer you believed I could be? Not at all. Get out of my sight. Who's that? Pardon the interruption. Is it Iris or... <laughs> oh my gosh, he's still, he's still disguised as a bailiff? But what the deuce does a man have to be noticed around here, my dear fellow? Ah, th th that voice. It's too late for th that voice now, Mr. Narihodo. I've been standing here patiently in the corner of the room for an eternity. And now it is time for me to come out. Ah ha ha, yes. It was me all along, I would have said, when finally you noticed me. But you people with your incessant babbling. Ah, uh, m- Mr. Shelms! Aha, uh -huh, yes, it was me all along. You see? Nice to meet you. I mean, nice to <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to see you. I'd, I'd assumed you'd been taken back to the hospital, to be honest. Indeed I was, but I managed to escape again. Oh, don't overdo it. I happen to be aware of one or two foibles of the doctor who is lending to me, tending to me. I merely made my knowledge as unknown to the man, and he happily issued me with a leave of absence. How very above board. <laughs> but enough of my adventures. That was a fine victory, Mr. Narihodo. Your tireless efforts justly rewarded, I feel. Congratulations are in order. As a close friend, I tip my hat to you. 
Oh, um, thank you. Huh. Some great detective you are. Great at being cold as ice, maybe. Have I irked you in some way, Miss Lestrade? While you've been having a snooze in your nice soft bed, some of us have been fighting for our lives. Ah, well, that force did cause me to lose a substantial amount of blood, it's true. So I have indeed been feeling somewhat cold. Not perhaps as cold as ice, but, well, have a feel. I'd rather not. Can you take your hands off my neck, please, Mr. Sholmes? Sexual harassment. And in some way, I suppose. Congratulations are in order for you, too, Miss Lestrade. What's that supposed to mean? Why do I have Arden? Well, naturally, it isn't my intention to alarm you, but... An acquittal in a trial with that particular prosecutor is perhaps a little precarious. Ah, oh, that's true. Well done, Mr. Sholmes. Not alarming in the slightest. <laughs> Oh, the Reaper, you mean? Because anyone found not guilty in the trial he was working on winds up dead anyway. Is that it? Precisely. The very point I was trying to make. You better watch your back. As exemplified by the fate of Mr. McGilded, in fact. Ah, but of course. I pay no attention to such irrational drivel myself. Don't listen to me. Yeah, well, it don't bother me. Oh, oh really? Of course not. The way I see it, the Reaper's a bit like him upstairs. Him upstairs? You mean like, like God? <laughs> yeah, I'm upstairs, know what's what, right? He knows what people are like on the inside. Just like God. Or the devil. <laughs> you won't have got the wrong end of the stick. There are some coves like that ball cotter which are written to the core. At the end of the day, I'm upstairs, make sure they get what they deserve. Oh, him upstairs, make sure they get what they deserve. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. You go, Gina. Divine justice is one thing, though. The Reaper taking matters into his own hands and claiming lives is another. Well, I ain't like the McGilders of this world, so I ain't scared. I got principles, see? Well said, Gina. I trait in you, which is to be admired, Miss Lestrade. Oi, just give him a rest, all right? As I was saying, congratulations on order. The news of your acquittal is very welcome news to me indeed. Let me express my heartfelt congratulations, Gina. Well, um, um. There you are, Hurley. How long have you been here? That's gotta be Iris, right? Yay. Honestly, I went through the main entrance especially to meet you there. Ah, Iris, my dear. I do apologize. But wait until I tell you what happened. This pair made out of fools of themselves. What happened? As you know, I have a penchant for disguise. I was hiding in this room dressed as a bailiff. But these dolts didn't notice my presence at all. <laughs> they had no idea. I'm a master of disguise, see? Can you imagine, Iris? Would you credit it? Huh. <sighs> I'm not sure, really. I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, Hurley, but you just don't have the weighty presence you seem to think you have. In fact, you really ought to be careful about that. It's going to land you in trouble one day. I'll be careful. Ouch. <laughs> she likes to tell you off. Anyway, it's such a shame. I was so hoping to throw a party for Ginny tonight. But you won't be able to come, will you? Don't think so. Don't look like I'm going to be going nowhere for a while. You heard the judge's patter. I got stuff to make amends for, apparently. All them offenses. What was it again? Breaking and entering? Taking the bulk card of stuff? What was in log? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, I think you'll find that basically being a pickpocket is the main offense. <laughs> but diving ain't no offense. It's a job, isn't it? I don't think so. It's called being a criminal. Still, it has got me thinking is all. Maybe I should start looking for another line of work. Good idea. I mean, you didn't start off as a lawyer, did you, Odo? Uh, well, no. But I was never a pickpocket, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, anyway, I reckon I can make a change. I'm gonna do something for all them lot like me from the slums. Something that makes a difference for them. I like the sound of that. That's a wonderful idea, Ginny. And I'm sure you can do it. <laughs> What's with that evil laugh, Ginny? What, what is it? 
Oh, she's crying again. I want to see a smile. Nothing. Miss Gina Lestrade. The prison carriage has arrived, ma'am. Come with me to the rear gate at once. Aw, oh, it's, it's kind of sad. Right. Well, looks like I'm off then. Yes. Goodbye, Gina. And good luck. I, I kind of hope we see her in the next game. That would suck if she just kind of disappears. And that's the end of her. Um, um. Odo. Whatever your name is. Yes. No, don't shoot. Do you want another crime? Do you want another crime on your record? Ah! What? What was that for? I um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say. So, ah, indeed. Perhaps the situation calls for a phrase that had her missing from your vocabulary, Miss Lestrade. Eh? On occasion such as this, I would recommend a simple thank you. Oh, what a thank you. Oh, yes, it's good advice, Ginny. And smile while you do it. Right, I see. Well. Come on, give me a, give me a little smile. Doesn't have to be a big one. Oh, look at that. Sit, sit, sit. Thanks, Odo. Aw. Oh, look at that. Ah, oh, love it, love it, love it. Thank you for everything, what you've done, for believing in me. Ah, oh, I love it. Love to see it. Oh, that actually warms my heart. I really liked her as a character. Not at all. In fact, that should be my line. Thank you, Gina. I hope to see you in the next game. I really do. I'd love to see her some more. Well, there she goes. I wonder if I'll ever see her again. Well, well. Quite the indomitable pick purse. Oh, I nearly forgot. I bought a paper outside. It's a special edition, and this trial is all over the front page. Pickpocket's innocence proven. Isn't it wonderful? You should have shown it to Gina, Iris. <laughs> she would have been thrilled. Oh, my bad. Oh, no. How silly of me. Ah, but anyway. Would you like the good news or the bad news? Ugh, not again. Well, what do you say, Runo? Hurley? As usual? I think I'd rather get the bad news out of the way first. Absolutely not. I have no intention of listening to anything but good news. And there you have it. How people answer that question says a lot about them, doesn't it? Let's not go there. Alright then. Maybe let's start with the good news this time. The rain has finally stopped. It was a record level of rainfall apparently. Good. Wonderful. Well, that's good news indeed. We can journey back in greater comfort. Comfort. Alright then, what's the bad news? The huge storm has left the seas very choppy. The channel in particular is awful, so sailing out of the out of the Dover has been delayed by a day or more. Wait. Dover? That's right. If we head to the station immediately, we may still make it in time to wave Susie off. Oh, that's right. She she was uh, trapped or whatever. But, but, there won't be a train, surely. We couldn't be that lucky. Who do you think I am, Mr. Narihodo? Mr. Sholmes? I rushed to Victoria Station earlier and made arrangements for a special express. If we hurry now, we, are, we shall be there in time for dinner. And I know of a fine restaurant that serves the most delicious baked souls. I don't... The great detective does it again. Indeed he does. I happen to be aware of a number of the rail transport director's foibles. What? I merely made my knowledge unknown to the man, and he happily laid on the locomotive. Elementary, my dear Rinosuke. Just an idea, but it might be wise to stop manipulating people that way. Nonsense. What are we waiting for, then? To London, Victoria. Okay, oh, it is indeed night time, 18th of April, 5.32 a.m., Port of Dover, Quayside. A new location. That took somewhat longer than I had anticipated. Susie's boat must be about to leave now. Oh, come on, we gotta see her. Miss Suzuto, where are you? Oh, 
There she is. Over there, look. It looks like she's reading something. Oh, is that her magical book of every piece of trivia ever? No, don't do it. Miss Suzuna, wait. What are you doing? I haven't seen you in such a long time. Mr. Mr. Narihoto, what are you doing here? We came as soon as we could after the trial. I mean, we heard that sailing's been being delayed due to the bad weather, you see. Oh, I... I see. Then, then tell me, how did Gina's trial go? It... it went well. She was acquitted. All thanks to you. That's wonderful. Really wonderful news. Yay, time to catch up. The book you were about to throw into the sea. It was your Encyclopedia of British Law, wasn't it? Oh dear. I was hoping you hadn't seen that. So does she consider herself a failure because she tampered with the crime scene? I'm not worthy of practicing law in any way now. So, I was saying my final farewell. You were saying goodbye to law? You, you, suzuto san I don't think so. Would I be correct in assuming? It's because of the people, Miss Suzuto? You did us a solid. I deliberately altered the scene of a crime, and then I tried to hide the fact. What I did is utterly unforgivable. That reminds me. How did you even come to have this, Susie? On the evening of the incident, Mr. Sholmes had invited Gina to dinner, if you remember. Oh yes, we had a wonderful time. Well, Gina gave us a little introductory lesson, didn't she? To the art of pickpocketing, I mean. That's right. Oh, that was so much fun. I stole Luna's armband. Oh, did she pickpocket it off you? Yes, please don't do that again, Iris. That fan's very important to me. Well, if it's so important, you should pay more attention to it. You didn't notice for ages. Fair enough. On a whim, I thought it would be fun to see if I could take the cat flapper mat. So I put it up my sleeve. Really? And then I rather forgot about it. Until I found myself in Mr. Winterbank's shot with it later that night. Ah, uh, I see. And then... Bang! Ah! Mr. Sholm! Mr. Sholm! Leave me, Mr. Narihoto! Right! Okay. After Mr. Narihoto left the shop, I started to think. That door started to play on my mind. The storeroom door, you mean? Yes. If Gina was anywhere in the shop, I realized it could only be behind that door. And at that moment... The little device that I had up my sleeve sprang to mind. I was so worried about Gina, I simply had to know. So, you used the cat flap mat to make the peephole in the door. As captured in a photographic print of the shop. By one of Hurley's red-handed recorders. Indeed, it was of the first importance. At that point. Precisely when the peephole was made. That information would prove to be Mr. Narihoto's greatest weapon. Though naturally, without proof, it would have amounted to nothing. But when I looked through the hole in the door... Yes, you saw a window bank dead. The sight that met my eyes made my blood run cold. Thoughts started to run through my mind. I remember that trial two months earlier. The trial of Magnus McGilded. I thought about how he had manipulated the evidence and arranged false testimony to secure his freedom. It made the British justice system feel very dark and sinister to me. And then, a terrible thought occurred to me. What if... What if someone wicked... What if some wicked criminal was planning to do the same thing now? Ah. Because from the appearance of the crime scene, it looked exactly as though Gina had shot Mr. Winderbank. Even though I was sure she would never have done such a thing. You were worried that the two culprit would try to frame her for the crime? That's right. But then I realized... It would be very difficult for anyone to give false testimony in this case. What do you mean? Well, the crime appeared to have happened before the door of a locked room. 
For some of the claim falsely to have witnessed it, there would have to be a way to see beyond the door. Ah. For with the people would be the very thing. Only, the people I had made wasn't actually there until after the crime had been committed, of course. And the criminal would know that, so it wouldn't make any difference. But the possibility of rather ingenious trap was there, was it not? Uh, a trap? Is that why she did it? So, is that why you kept it a secret, Susie? You never mentioned that you made the peephole to anyone, not even to the police. It's very clever. I know, and I knew at the time what I was doing was wrong. A criminal offense, even. That's why I decided to confide in Mr. Sholmes. If Mr. Norihoto is completely backed into a corner, there's no other possible means of escape. The truth about the people could save him. That was my plan. She really does think of everything. You are a worthy assistant. But, but then, why didn't you just tell me everything before the trial began? My dear fellow, you're not thinking straight. If she had done that, it would have rendered you complicit in the whole escapade. Ah. You could have been disbarred if you had seemed to have knowingly tampered with the crime scene. So, Mr. Zito decided to shoulder the burden of responsibility alone. For your sake, and Miss Lestrade's. She really did think of everything. The Suzuto. The truth is, when it happened, I did it because... I lost a little of my faith in the law. Oh. Makes sense. A lot's been happening. I was worried that the right person wouldn't be convicted of the crime. But the moment I allowed myself to think that... Is the moment I lost my right to call myself a judicial assistant. Nah, you're good. Dot, 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 dot. What you did isn't comparable to what he did. Graydon is the one who lied in the witness stand. Using that people as a way to implicate, Im implicate Gina. And besides, if the people inconsistency hadn't existed, we'd be screwed. I'm not at all sure what she would have been acquitted in the end. But Suzuto, what you did saved Gina's life. You bet your biscuits. Well, with your kind words, Mr. Narahodo, you saved me too. For my regrets. Yeah. Come on, give me a hug. Well, we must all be thankful that Miss Lestrade's freedom has been assured. Yes, exactly. Although some of the loose ends in that trial will continue to play on my mind, I'm sure. But the revelation that the music box does contain secret messages, Mr. Narihoto! What a triumphant... What a triumph to work that out! I'm full of admiration. Well, actually, that argument wasn't quite as compelling as I thought it was. Oh, it wasn't? Yeah, we never discovered what was the case with that. There was a communications officer among the jury members, you see. A telegraph operator. And she said that the majority of the sounds on the disc were just meaningless tones. As one would expect, after all, we are talking about secret government co communications. No doubt they were written in cipher, to avoid being readily understood, should they have been intercepted. In cipher? I... I see. So then, we could never have hoped to understand the message anyway. Nonsense, my dear fellow. It's quite a zero-pipe problem, I assure you. Whatever that means. Dot, dot, dot. Lots of dots. Dot, 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 dot. A. So. Gi. Asagi. What? Well, that can't be a real word, can it? How funny. Wait. Iris, what did you just say? Oh, um, I just said, Asogi. That sounds familiar. Is that somebody's name? That's a name, right? Does that word mean something to you? Mean something? So, Asogi. Was the name of my best friend. Oh, Ka Kazuma Asogi? That's right, that, that would be where I know it from. What? But how? How do you know that name, Iris? I wrote it down during the trial before. When the message was playing on the music box. She transcribed it on the fly? She really is a genius. I thought the message probably wouldn't be written out in the plain Morse code, so I tried various ways to interpret it. But whatever I tried, the words just didn't seem to make any sense. That is, in English at least. Oh. 
Oh, Japanese. It suddenly occurred to me, you see. There's more than one Morse code, not just the English variety. Various countries around the world have altered and added to Morse code to use it in their own languages. I, I don't believe it. Are you saying? That's right. I've only actually seen a chart of Japanese Morse code once before. But I think it's based on the Iroha pangram, isn't it? And you mean to say that in Japanese Morse code, the message said the Asagi? Yes, I think so. Sorry, but I don't remember all of the Japanese Morse code. Iris, would you let me see that? Masuzuro, do you know it? Do you know Japanese Morse code? Yes, I spent some time studying it. Ah, oh, convenient. Because I'm quite sure Morse, co Morse code will become ever more important for international communication. I just have a feeling. Then might I recommend, my dear madam, that you focus your efforts on the English version? version? Be that as it may, Iris, so show me the message, please. Of course. Okay. But, but what can this possibly mean? Whatever is in that long sequence of supposedly meaningless dots and dashes, it's made the color drain from Suzuto-san's face. Is, is Kazuma involved in something? There's no doubt that this message is written in Japanese Morse code. So the British Empire has been using Japanese for its secret communications? I don't understand the reason why, but... The message appears to be a list of four people's names. Four names? Okay, what do we got? The first is K Asagi Kazuma. Kazuma Asagi. Why? Why was his name on that disc? The second is A Shin. Shin? I don't recognize that name. The third is T uh, Guragusen. Gurag Gregson? Ah. Oh. They, they must all be secret agents or something. Ah, oh, it seems some device. Gregson is the third man on the list. And what's his name doing in a secret government communication as well? And the last name? What's the matter, Miss Suzuto? Is it like yours or something? It's... It's just so strange. So unexpected. Oh, what is it, Susie? Don't keep us in suspense. What is it? The last name... Is Jay Wilson. What? Oh, her father? Wilson? John H. Wilson? You mean Daddy? It says only Jay Wilson, so I'm afraid I can't be sure. Then after the four names, it reads, If I translate from Japanese, that is all four. And that's the end of the message. Or rather, the end of what you noted down, Iris. Intriguing. I just can't believe it. Who would ever have thought that those discs contained Japanese Morse code? Not to mention a strange list of some disturbingly familiar names. Go to pair that this particular message is a communication of some kind between Great Britain and the Empire of Japan. So, Daddy could be in Japan then? Where Susie and Runo come from? Oh, well, about that. Huh, no, it's not very likely really, is it? I mean, there are thousands of people with the surname Wilson, and there must be lots of jades among them. True. It's a pretty common name. Professor John H. Wilson, visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. But we can't tell Iris about that now. We just can't. Why not? <laughs> I guess we have to wait till the time is right. This is so strange. Somehow, in solving the case of Mr. Windermink's murder today, I feel like I've rolled back a boulder at the mouth of a very dark cave. Indeed. I do wonder if perhaps it's a dark cave that we shouldn't go wandering inside. We must, because I'm curious. Honk! That's a loud goose. Aflac! Oh dear, the ship is going to set sail soon. Yes, it seems so. Bye, Suzuto. I'll sail on that steamship first to the port of Dunkirk in France. 
Then I'll change onto a larger passenger vessel bound for Japan. I'm gonna miss you. You're really going then, Susie? I'm glad we at least got to see her. We wish you a safe passage, Miss Susito. I sure by the time you return, I won't remember your name at all. Thank you so much. I wish all of you the very best. Miss Susito, I... I had hoped to have you always at my side, to guide me and support me. Mr. Narahodo, please, come back soon. As far as I'm concerned, you really are the very best judicial assistant in the world. Iris is a close second. Ah, Need a tissue? I'm, I'm quite sure I'll be back before you know it. I'll be back before the start of the sequel. Really, Susie? Oh, now don't forget, Iris, I made you a promise I've yet to fulfill. A promise? About your manuscript. Oh, yeah. Ah! Oh, yes. The Hound of the Baskervilles. What a... Oh, that's right. We need to know how she knows about it. Well, I'll be waiting for you then, Susie. A promise is a promise. Definitely, Iris. Mr. Narihoto? Yes? Do you remember the first time we met? Yes, of course. Heh. <laughs> What a fun day that was. On the SS Buria, when I was dragged out from that wardrobe still half asleep. If I remember rightly, you threw me halfway across the cabin with the Susan takedown. Oh, those were the days. You know very well what I'm talking about after that. It's strange, but being thrown together everywhere in that case, I somehow felt strange anyway. Or, I felt straight away that you were the perfect person to continue Cosmos Sama's great legacy. Miss Suzuto. My instincts were right. I really want to believe. No, I'm sure that. I'll be back soon. Farewell until then. Bye. Aw, goodbyes are always so sad. Oh, we're gonna cut scene. Somehow we seem to have come to the end of the adventures of Ryu no Suke Naruhodo. For the first volume, at least. Bye! We'll miss Looking you. Looking back now, it feels as though fate has led me on this journey. Fate led me to becoming a lawyer, to traveling halfway around hey, the world. Hey, Draggy! To meeting the great detective. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be trials and tribulations ahead. I don't know what we're saying. Of course there will. <laughs> She's shouting, by the way, the ship is called the Titanic. Bye. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Ah, look at that. It's a little ambiance music. After all, I have the greatest friends in the world. On my side. You got a bit of a British accent too. It's like a cross between British and like a Asian accent. I don't know. And is that it? Is that the end of our adventure? Wow. We're coming close to four hours. Like three hours and forty minutes. Oh, and there's more. Ah, oh, yes, Mr. Narihoto. Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I have some rather awkward news. The railway company has decided to sue over the Special Express train, apparently. Huh? Oh, damn it. It caused such a commotion on the line. All the other trains had to wait at stations. What does this have to do with me? But really, we would never have made it to Dover in time otherwise. Anyway, I explained everything. And how it was all your fault. <laughs> what the hell? Huh? Huh? I believe a formal complaint should be delivered to your office tomorrow. But not to worry, my dear fellow. According to Miss Suzuto, you love defending yourself in court. Huh? 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 Are we, are we gonna have an obje objection? I feel like all the games end with that. That's all right. I'm perfectly happy to testify. He really did look like the sort of man who do something so outrageous. See? Um, Mr. Sholmes. Yes. What is it, my dear fellow? A word, if you don't mind. 
Why, certainly. Any word you like. Fellow would help, my dear fellow. Here it comes. Oh, yes. I love Uno's words. And I know just the one he'll use here. Then, I really must say... Objection! Objection! And there we go. Oh, man. Point that finger. Slam that desk. Okay. This is going to take us through. That's the game. That's it, guys. Oh, okay. In the following weeks, hundreds of music boxes arrived at Baker Street from all over Europe. Something was afoot. Though it transpired, I had ordered them all myself. Ha <laughs> ha. So I advertised them for sale with used by Mr. Sholmes to solve an important case. And the money I've earned, consulting detective work pays a pittance for by comparison. Yeah. All the games give you a little, like, little, uh, glimpses or monologues with the char with different characters. Uh, I haven't slept a wink. That's manuscript to do tomorrow now. When I'm this busy, Hurley usually cooks me breakfast. Well, cooks is an overstatement, but some dry toast and instant coffee. I do miss Susie and her lovely Japanese breakfast. She'll be back soon, Iris, don't worry. Don't cry. Witness, your testimony is riddled with contradictions. Oh, it's been so long. Exactly. Rarely do rare Koban coins hide under rare stakes themselves. Well, I don't know, sir. Knows his father is an innocent man. Or are you calling my son a liar? Witnesses, my courtroom is no place for your petty arguments. I think I just gave him the normal judge voice for whatever. Man, I'm going to have to voice old characters. And remember on the spot what they sound like. Oh, here we This is the guy I was talking about. Having delivered the Russian Don to the Shuan Shanghai and don't steamship for a while. Sorry. But last night I apprehended an extremely suspicious Japanese national on board. I've done nothing wrong. All I did was give Wagahai's offspring refuge in my pocket. A man brings some kittens on board and suddenly he's a hardened criminal? It's not fair. Ah, oh. Poor guy. He was a mess, but he was fun. He was fun to voice. That was the fourth case, right? Yeah. Scientific investigation will be the gold standard for policing in the new age. I dream of a world governed by the tenet of order and discipline. Like a great clock, in fact, whose hundreds of parts mesh together in perfect unison. Time to go. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a two minutes and 37 seconds until my next appointment. Okay, this guy didn't play as huge a part as I thought he would. But who knows? This is the next game, right? If he, if he comes back. Hey, Gregson. The latest Rats magazine is out. Now I'm in it again. Whenever I say that one line she wrote now, I get a standing ovation. Want to hear it? Huh. Not bad, I suppose. For an amateur. <laughs> what praise? Glug, 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 glug. Ah, oh, what a nice brew. Ah, her ladies that put me to shame. <laughs> Pinky out. I like. Okay. Garadab. Been visiting the old girl on a daily basis, of course. Junie, my old jailbird. Must say, battling with those bally stairs every day has done wonders for the dicky peg. What the heck? Managing rather well with the housework, too. Got this mad business taped up, I'd say. Hope the gossiping neighboring don't release the man of the house as a, an old maid. <laughs> I butcher that because it's, it's it'll out of scroll, so I'm trying to read it quickly. My Rowley is back on the beat again, all thanks to the Reaper. There's nothing I enjoy more these days than hunting out small chains in the gutter. I'm a better Bobby now, looking out for Londoners as dropped pennies in my lovely wife. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rowley. Aw, oh, you two. So cute. Cut it out, though.
Yay, Gina. Looks like I'm going to be doing time for a bit now. But Iris comes every day for a natter. So it ain't too boring. She's always going on about all them cases what Sholmes is looking into. Criminal investigations are kind of interesting. When you get into them. As much as I like Gina, I am glad that there were consequences. It wasn't just like, happy ending, you know what I mean? Like, given all that she's done, I'm glad that there are consequences. I do feel for her. I understand her reason, like, why she did what she did. And look who it is. Yes, I renounce my upbringing and choose a life of sophisticated crime. But regrets? Please. Get over, bruv. That ain't the ass we used to know. Huh. <laughs> We got time in here to plan to come back and move a tin and skulk and milk run, right? Oh my god, let's do it. The three Muscahoosets milk in the neighborhood for all it's worth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They've been reunited. I like how out of place he seems. He doesn't seem like he belongs in this little gang. Okay. Suzido! This past six months has been a time I shall remember forevermore. Painful goodbyes and wonderful encounters. I've come to realize that's what life is all about. Now, Hodo san, I promise your assistant will return to you one day. But for now, I leave you with many memories and a heartfelt wish that life will treat you well. Bye, Suzuto. It's been a pleasure. See you next game. Because I know you're in it. Okay. Oh, are we back with me now? Aw. That little picture. Look at, the, look at us. I just took a screenshot. <laughs> screenshot that pic. Save it. Capcom! Give us a bow. See you next time, guys. <laughs> Snap! Love it. The Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Finn. Oh yeah, I should get a trophy, right? For beating the game. Give it to me. Give me the oh, okay. There's more. Fleeting farewell. Another picture I want to screenshot because that looks epic. I like the artwork there. Okay, are we officially done? Not that I haven't been enjoying this. I don't even know what time it is. Oh yay! New new menu pictures. The docks. Well, guys, that that does it. That was the game. I really enjoyed it. I really like the, the story and like even the character progression a lot. Like with Narahodo, like how he wasn't even a lawyer, he kinda just got thrust into it. And there was one point in particular where they were talking about how like even during the Gilded's trial, he was just at that point he wasn't an experienced lawyer, he was just doing his job. He was given this client that he had to defend and he defended him, he did his job. But he's even between that case and this final case, he's grown so much that he's able to really discern more like, Gina is different than McGill did, right? Like, like he actually truly trusts Gina. Whereas I feel like with McGill did, I don't know if he ever fully trusted him. He was just like, that's my job. Um, and of course, Suzido, I, I really like the side characters. I mean, I like the crap all over Sholmes, but he was fun. He was a lot of fun to voice. Um, he just wasn't as, he wasn't as much of a genius. I mean, at times he could be, but he was a bit of a buffoon, right? But a lovable buffoon, and he was a lot of fun. Um, I really like Suzido and Iris, though. I don't know which I liked more. Probably Suzido. It's hard not to love Suzido, but they were both really intelligent, really helpful. I feel like that, in a way, sets them apart even more than a lot of the other assistants. Like, as much as I love, like, Maya, um, who do we like? Kay Faraday, um, oh shoot, I'm blanking out on, uh, Phoenix Wright's daughter. Oh, Trucy, right? Trucy. Trucy, yeah, right, yeah. Like, all these other side characters you get, they're fun, but they're kind of there, and they're just there to be goofy, and sure, they help, but sometimes they even land themselves in trouble, too. Like, how many times has Maya, you know, gotten arrested, and we have to bail her out, you know? Suzuto, I've, 
I've said throughout the series, like with Suzuro, it's almost like the opposite. She, she already was versed in law. She already knew a lot about law before even me. So she was a very capable assistant. And that was only verified and proven further by, you know, how this case ended. That she left us vital evidence. Almost mirroring what happened in the very beginning of the game where she came in with vital evidence, you know? So she was great. And Iris was, was really great. You know, her inventions helped us out. Obviously, it was her flap -o -matic that actually helped us, even though Suzuro was the one who used it. And even though we couldn't use her blood technology in court, that was still very helpful. So, they were both great side characters. Shorms was fun, too. They were all great. And yeah, I mean, again, I always love when the various trials and cases um, come together and, you know, and actually play off of each other. Namely, you know, obviously the third case in this game and obviously this final case. But of course, there were little elements of the other cases that peeked in, whether it was important or not, but, you know. I always like that. I enjoy that. I wouldn't say, as a finale, I wouldn't say this has this, this hit the same as other finales in terms of, like, big twists. Like, I can think of some... Sorry, my voice is cracked. I can think of some twists in some of the other games that have been, like, shocking reveals and, like, really intense. I mean, this was intense, don't get me wrong, but it kind of ended... Like, I knew... You knew... You know, uh, Graydon, Ashley Graydon, was gonna end up being the guilty party here. And we knew Gregson was colluding with him in some way. So there were no twists there. It was just the details, right, that were a bit, uh, that we found out. I know it was, quite, it was kind of shocking that, uh, Graydon, um, you know, killed uh, McGilded. I guess that was a big twist. But it was more, it was more we had the pieces there. We just needed to prove it. But it was still fun. It was still great. I'm, st I'm really looking forward to the game. Th sorry, the next game. I feel like this game, more than any other game, though, has set pieces in motion for the next game. You know, I feel like, for the most part, if an Ace Attorney game ends on kind of a fulfilling... Not that this wasn't fulfilling, but, you know, a, a finished note, a, f a finite note. And then the next game is a completely new story that might tie in to past events here and there, but usually not, right? This one, it definitely feels like they set a lot of pieces in motion. For the next game like they, they they put out those four names i guess they're all they might all be like government agents or something i don't know there was one name that they didn't even recognize and i didn't recognize so he might be somebody that appears in the next game i will say surprisingly i made um i made guesses as to things that might come back around that didn't like for example i still have no no idea why they introduced that uh in the fourth case that random third tenant and he never came back again again unless he does in the next game. That'll be some 4D chess there. If it's like, oh, we're setting little... Even those little details we're putting in motion. There was even that... There was even that little... get. There were, there were a lot of characters I thought might make an appearance. Like, I had said the Russian revolutionary word, and he did. But as a juror. But, you know, he didn't have a serious, important role. I also I also guessed that... Uh, I forget her name. It's been so long. Jezily? Jezily Brett. That she might come, that she was important, but I guess not. Again, unless she comes back in the next game. But it's fun to guess these things, though. It's, it's fun to figure out these little, you know, piece these things together, even if they're wrong. But man, and the music was great. Like, it was a really solid game. Just even the structure of it, you know? I'd have to think on it. Maybe maybe when I start my next series, I'll think about it. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll you know, give you a... I'll give you a definitive answer of where I might place this game amongst the others, because I still have to sit on it. Like I said, the ending wasn't as strong as some others, but it was still a great game. The character development, the story progression, even the setting I really liked. I didn't talk about that yet, but it was just cool being in Britain. Like, all the other games... Well, it's funny, because all the other games kind of technically take place in America, an Americanized version of... I guess of Japan, like it's supposed to be Japan, but for the localization they made it America. It's weird, but uh, it works in some cases, but other times it's like a, a, a very Japanese setting and you're supposed to believe it's America. But obviously this definitely took place in Britain, obviously. And so yeah, it was just a cool setting that I really liked. It was all, uh, the time period was also interesting, this is the earliest that a game has taken place in the, in the series, so... There were certain, you know, certain inventions that didn't exist yet, like DNA and stuff. So, it couldn't be used. And even things like, uh, you know, 
uh, Iris's invention. That was like, oh, we don't have that yet. We can't trust this. This witchcraft, <laughs> you know? Oh man, I could go on, but we've, we've literally just hit four, four hours, so four hours and 30 seconds. <laughs> so I'm going to end it here. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as I enjoyed playing through it. It's really been a, a blast. And if you did enjoy it, look forward to uh, The Great Ace Attorney 2, which will definitely be coming up. I might take a break from The Great Ace Attorney for now. In fact, I know I am because I already have a plan. My next game is going to be Life is Strange True Colors, which I've been really wanting to play. But I've been holding off until I beat this game. And then I might then I might jump into... The, I probably will jump into The Great Ace Attorney 2 next unless something comes along that I want to play more or something. But most likely I'll just, you know, insert a game in between and we'll get back to The, the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles 2. Or the Great Ace Attorney too, rather, after uh, after Life is Strange. And if you like if you like this game, I play I have other series on the channel. Come go check it out. Subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out greatly. Um, like the video, of course. Um, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the series. I really I really would love to interact with you guys. So feel free to you know leave your honest thoughts and opinions. Um, and yeah, that's really all I have to say. So thank you guys so, so much once again. Take care and bye-bye. <laughs>